It's Thursday, you know what that means. Welcome to Max Wrestling. I am your captain, he is El Jefe, and tonight, things are a little clearer on WrestleMania. Just a little bit. Coming up tonight, the press conference that rocked the world. Brock Lesnar erased from all of WWE history, and probably soon to be UFC history. Is All Elite Okada a done deal? Dear God, I hope so. And a blockbuster, I mean blockbuster contract signing as both the Kingpin and Cypher will be here and we have backup security. So make sure you're subscribed right here at MaxWrestling.com. Max Wrestling, YouTube.com forward slash Max Wrestling. Follow us on SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you get lovely podcast, Apple Podcasts, how to keep plugging that. And head over to the Be Live Dumb website, MaxWrestlingNet.Weebly.com. And if y'all don't see, we got big Mark, Mark, Mike Larkin in the house. Blast Mike, of the past. Good morning. I'm good, man. First of all, it's good to be reunited with the two of you. It's a very eventful week in the world of professional wrestling. I'm looking forward to talking with you, gentlemen. It is. It's a weird. very... Ever... Go ahead. I was like, you know how weird it is, like me cutting an intro and seeing Mike right here? I'm like, I'm normally like, <laughs> this seeing this in the morning back in the day was like, you just, you shut up and you wait your 10. You shut up and you wait your 10. Now the roles are reversed. It's not a problem, man. I'm happy to be back. I mean, I'm not sporadically weekly as I was, but sporadically I'm here to make an appearance and do occasion. So I'm happy to be here nonetheless. It uh, It has been a very much a throwback week. Obviously, the Kingpin is back. Yesterday was Evan McCabe's birthday. Happy birthday, Evan. And Ooh. the podcast machine is back with us this week. So, um, man, so much to address. Um, honestly, I think the press conference peaked and nothing quite followed it up but we'll get into it um as you know we start the show with the hot topics we didn't post them in the group yesterday because uh it was like a week ago and half of you probably forgot about it and phoenix probably hasn't seen it yet so nope. we're gonna kick it off with the free hot topics as moses just said so what do you want to talk about so what do you want to talk about all right, first on the agenda, that press conference was 90 minutes of PLE content. It really was. As I think Michael Cole put it, this this, this feels like a PLE. It, yeah, it did. I mean, you look at it from the start. I mean, even when you had Punk and Big E going back and forth, as you know, you know, Punk, I heard, you know, you may need some reinforcement and everything <laughs> that went into that. I, I love the jabs. If you could have CM Punk in the role of where he's just doing this and keeping him on TV, it doesn't even matter if he goes back to commentary. Having a role for Punk, and that was very suited for him on that panel. Yeah, I just got to say real quick, one of my favorite things about the entire press conference was CM Punk spent 90 minutes wishing people would punch each other in the face. (laughs) Great step. I love it. Mike Mike sounds like TSK over here. I mean, he really does. Oh, my God. Uh, I I mean, uh, just the sentiments alone, like it's in all reality of it all. It's finding finding somewhere for punk to be that's not in the ring, possibly stirring up the pot. I love the guy on commentary. I love the guy uh, as a as an announcer. I thought he was great, especially back when he was doing whatever that dumbass show was on Fox. Was it Fox Sports or whatever? I'm going to be backstage. Thank you. I was about to say, I was like, Mark's got the knowledge. So, I mean, I like that, but to, to, to go to the press conference, as much as it was a PLE from, again, the, as I love to always say, from the outsider looking in, the guy that normally doesn't watch the E, I enjoyed the hell out of it. It it felt like you were trying to, it, as much as it was a PLE, it felt like a big fight promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like how like how we would used to do like the Tysons and the, and the Lennox Lewis's, you know what I mean? The whole, you know what I mean? The big heavyweight fights of back in the day, the giant press conferences. This felt UFC. That's where I'm, I'm fucking bowling it all in one. This felt very UFC. It, it wasn't so much a press conference because nobody was asking questions. No. Um, it, was ba- it was basically a promo show. It was it was what we do. It was um, just copy this. It it felt this is a throwback. It felt like the WrestleMania 15 Rage Party, uh, where they yeah. had like this event before WrestleMania 15, and they all cut promos. Uh, and Shane McMahon was trying to get Kane to dance and loosen up at the party. <laughs> Not it, gonna it reminds- happen. Well, no, it reminds me of like when you felt that big fight field in 95 when Shawn Michaels and Diesel were going into it and Shawn gave that I'll give you a show like you've never, ever seen before. Why? Because I can. You have the fight capital world, Las Vegas, Nevada. You have everything that goes into it. You have The Rock there. You have Rhea Ripley. You have everyone in there. It makes you feel like you're watching something special. And that's the beauty of professional wrestling, that gravitational pull, that evoking emotions and eliciting reactions. And that's really what we got on and all. Yeah. And also... 
they managed to save WrestleMania because right before the press conference, hey. everybody was up in arms. We want Cody was trending for a week. And uh, we were yes. like, if they're really going with Rock and Roman, is, well, people aren't going to accept it. They got to do something to flip it. And they did. Um, and the perfect way they did it was Rocky turning heel. Hollywood Rock is back. <laughs> uh, he's it's corporate beautiful. rock now. Corporate rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It, it it's so good it's so good to see him play the heel it, it, it's it's refreshing um it takes a little heat off of roman this is something that i'm slowly <laughs> like it's a little added bonus you know what i mean now it's now there's not as much heat on roman now it's just can roman survive now you know what i mean it, that's what at least in my opinion because it looks it, cody looks on well, i don't want to say unbeatable but he's going in there with this uh over the top momentum you know what i mean yeah he's got I- the, the whole WWE universe behind him. It's Brian. They again. They tried the Brian. The Daniel. I gotta fucking go backwards. Daniel they Bryan. tried the Daniel Bryan, Bryan effect, and it's working. I, I do think though, maybe they made Cody look a little bit weak at the press conference. Obviously, he's looked really strong since. But at the press conference, he came out very late, interrupting the Rock and everything. Made his choice that he's picking Roman, uh, and then when he dropped the line about. You know, the family and everything, and then that beautiful shot of him and Roman staring down, and then the rock just comes into the frame, and it's like, oh, fuck, you fucked up. It made Cody look kind of, like, small. Because now you got this big hulking rock coming at him, and he's like, what What did I do? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it adds, though, to the fact of, like, you know, now also with Seth being in this corner. I mean, if they do the, the tag match, because everybody's been buzzing that we should get Rock and Roman against Seth and Cody, which I would be for. It also protects The Rock, just because if you remember the last time we saw him one-on-one with Cena back in 2013, he did get injured. So there's many different mm-hmm. avenues they could go with how they want to protect, protect the particular matchup. Yeah, the, the tag match does sound exciting. But personally, I don't want to see Ro- uh, Roman or Cody wrestle or staff actually, until Mania Night 2, because there's a massive injury bug going around right now. Seth's still dealing with it. Uh, obviously, we just lost Punk. Uh, and I would hate for something to happen to Roman and Cody's main event after all this time that we spent waiting for it, after the fuck-up of almost not getting it, and after the big U-turn to save it. Uh, I would just would not want to lose that main event right now and I wouldn't want to risk it but a tag match does look good and it obviously looks like that's what they're teasing with the trailer yeah um, I mean, the WrestleMania build this week, I mean, you were talking about, just to go reiterate to your point, of just pretty much like, man, it's now saved and everything feels good about it. I think just you're so excited to see not only The Rock in there, but Roman and Cody finishing the story. But you have on the other side of things who's going to go with the Elimination Chamber. And I'm going to add this. DM Hunk has made my absolute favorite part of professional wrestling now. This is probably the best work he's doing. So everybody has a role, and it's an exciting electric feel, electrifying, pun intended, so to speak. We can't change his initials because he's Charles Montgomery Punk. <laughs> right. <laughs> Charles Montgomery Punk. <laughs> Greatest name job ever by Rob. But no, it's, it, you're, you're not wrong. You know what I mean? He, he looks small. He looks weak. But then again, as, as the world, or I guess some of the WWE fans don't understand, this is the world's biggest star. I don't give a shit what you say, what it is, and what field. This guy can go anywhere, and he's immediately recognized. He can show up on the Food Network and get a giant ovation and bring them gigantic ratings. He can show up in, you know, in, in Larkin's house with a cat, and everybody would love him more so. <laughs> That's you know exactly I mean? how sure The Rock came into the frame at the press conference. Just exactly. like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> But it's it as much as as much as he looks uh, small. Again, it's you have to. That's it's the bloodline now. It turned from the Rock and Roman against Cody to the bloodline against Cody. And now when Cody wins, and I, God, I hope he does. And Uncle Paul, surely I hope they got to now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is how you set it up. Now, granted, is it one of those situations where it's like you know Cody has to. All he's got to do is overcome is overcome uh, Roman, but th- with the tag match thing, it, as much as the injury risk, I want to see it. Give it to me on night one. You have the match night two. You go fucking safe. Go ten minutes into the thing and then let it blow up. Build anticipation. Mm-hmm. You don't have to get far. You really don't have. A, but at the same time, it's, we're talking Hollywood Rock here. Okay, we're talking the ultimate heel. What's the best way to get heel to get Ultimate ultimate heat from the crowd. You don't sell. 
You don't, you, you're, you're, you're a, this overpowering monster. Yeah, he's probably still going to get some love from us old heads out there because we're going to love The Rock no matter what. But that's how you're going to get more heat on Cody by being that dominant guy that's just beating on and beating on and beating on and beating on Seth just because you're The Rock. You're this giant, powerful dude. All of a sudden, you know, maybe fucking Sammy, maybe the locker room clears and know The Rock, we can't have the bloodline take over. We don't know. You could come up with something that not only allows us to see this tag match, maybe we're going to want to see it again at a later point, but it builds to the overall of night two. It just, it, it builds to the anticipation of crap. Well, this, you know what I mean? Is Cody, can Cody overcome the odds? Well, somebody, you know, the, Cody had people come out and ruin this tag match. How many, how many people of the bloodline are going to come out? Are we going to see the fucking, you know, the old heads come out? I mean, that's the thing I've seen people saying, like, the best way to end this match now is everybody that's ever done, the bloodline have ever done dirty, come out to, you know, protect Cody, keep the bloodline at bay. And I'm like, well, they tried that last year. KO and Sammy came out, stopped the Usos, and it felt like a perfect finish. And then, of course, Solo comes in and fucking thumb to the throat, and that's it. But that's it. But that's just two guys. Now, yeah. it, now it's the lock. Like, if you, if, and I have to look at it like that because Seth is the world heavyweight champion. So if, if there's anybody who can speak for the locker room as far as champions, it would be him. If he's pissed and willing to go against somebody he had once in time teamed with and even made references to the whole jazz. Well, you know, how many other people are behind him? Kevin and Sammy, they're definitely behind it. You know, I'm sure L.A. Knight wants a piece of, fuck, a piece of Roman Reigns in the bloodline. You got, God only knows how many people are there willing to help Cody in this instance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, I've also seen a couple of teases that, or rather wishful thinking from some people, that Seth might turn heel and cost Cody the title. It, it makes no sense for me. I know he's got his history with Roman, but... Like, Roman literally spent last week pissing all over the World Heavyweight title. And that's, oh, yeah. from a kayfabe standpoint, that's going to piss Seth all the way off. The amount of work he's put into that title. Right. And um, I mean, it would make no sense to have a heel turn just because of how white hot against Seth is. But also at the same time, it's like, I like the scenario of having the bloodline, people that they've wronged, go after Roman and whatnot. I mean, hell, if you look at it back at WrestleMania 26, I mean, with the build for Brett and Vince, it all led to that Mania match, which... Say what you will about it, but when yeah. you had when you had the Hart Dynasty attack in Vince and all of them beating them up, it's that ultimate pure revenge. So I can see them going into like the revenge tour, so to speak, again against Roman Reigns. Uh, and history tells us this is what we get every milestone WrestleMania 10, 30, uh, 10, 20, 30. There's always a feel good moment at the end. We have to have a feel good moment now. It's per- I don't care about Hulk Hogan's fucking record. It's a different title anyway. Um, yeah. Just give us that feel-good moment. We've waited for it. We've been very, very patient. We said last year we can't do another year of Roman as champion, and we did. We've been very good. I mean, he's hardly been there, but we've we, we've put up with it for another year. I mean, to compare it to his father, you look back in the 80s when it took Dusty two years, and he finally won the World's Heavyweight Championship from Ric Flair, so you have that parallel right there. Maybe that's what they were going for when we were they were making his way two years because, I mean, that was normal back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, that makes sense. But then again, when you have that accomplishment that goes along with it, you, you're a two-time Rumble winner and a back-to-back at that, so that mm-hmm. only goes for legends in our mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's kind of why I think everybody got a sour, like, are you really going to have to, are you really going to do that just for this? And yeah, we talked last week about how that is very limited company. What is it, like four or five people that have done back-to-back Rumbles, Hogan, Rock, Sean. Not Rock, uh, Austin. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, okay. Cody is in very, very high echelons. Uh, there's one thing I didn't like about the press conference. Wait. Well, I did like it, but it was a reason that I didn't like it too. Uh, Becky and Rhea. I didn't want to see Becky confront Rhea Ripley because it's a giveaway. Much, the it's a giveaway. Yeah, as much as it's going to be a great match, and we know that's where it's going. Why? We've we've got Becky in the chamber. We know she's going to win, but they did the exact same thing with Shayna Baszler. They built her and Becky before she even qualified for the chamber, so we knew she was going to win. What the fuck is even the point? 
Man, I, I look at it from a stance, too, as well. Like, my two favorites, the two favorites, I would say, going into this Elimination Chamber. Liv, just coming back after year, last time we saw her got beat by Rhea. Rhea and Liv is not WrestleMania match type for me. I think that's a secondary pay-per-view. When you have Rhea and Becky the build, like you mentioned with Becky and Shayna, you had that dominant performance in the 2020 Elimination Chamber, which then changed the Right, which <laughs> exactly, and then it would lead to her and Shane at that WrestleMania, which I mean, Shane, I still have always said should have won that, but I digress. Um, you have everything that goes into this match with Becky and Rhea. I think the quality of it, like you mentioned, is going to be good, but they gave the kind of giveaway of okay, here we are. But I think the way that the story should go is you have to have Rhea beat her, much like she did Charlotte. You have to have a competitive matchup, and it only makes sense to only solidify and really centimize really what we get to see with Rhea and Becky then. Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm I'm totally fine with the match. I'm really looking forward to Becky and Rhea. But if you're going to be building this, keep them away from each other until we know officially that Becky's the number one contender. I mean, if you really want to piss people off, I mean, we're doing Rhea and Nia in Australia. If you want to piss people off because Becky and Nia still have a story, you would have Nia beat her and just have Australia riot. But no, I mean, yeah. I think we're going to get Rhea and Becky. Don't do that. Don't, no, don't piss don't off do the that. Aussies. Don't piss off the Aussies. Oh, I might. Well, trust me, I, I know of one Aussie, and when he gets upset, like the <laughs> entire team changes. So I can imagine the entire stadium full of Aussies. Don't do it. I can barbecue the place. I can't. I can't do an Australian accent. It's so tough. But I mean, you can't I do an Australian say, accent, mate. I will say on a side note, though, I think this is probably the best Nia Jax has ever looked at all in her career. <laughs> like really, like this is the best one. Mm. So far. I'm trying not to praise her at all. I'm trying. He's, to he's got to a point. I'm not either, but I got to give the woman credit for actually having somewhat of a better run than she has before. I'm, I'm going to say it in my Raw review later. Uh, it was very uncharacteristic of her on Raw when she came out to Becky, and it was all crocodile tears. And it's like, oh, if I'm half the mom you are. Yes. It's, it's odd seeing yeah, Nia be nice yeah. to somebody. <clears throat> and obviously don't spill Becky's lemonade. But now. Uh, it's a blockbuster match. I'm looking forward to it. I just wish they would have kept them apart until after the chamber because you're just making it obvious. Um, and also another thing I did like was the tease between Triple H and the Rock, the power struggle. Uh, Rock is technically Triple H's boss now, but then we had Triple H come out on SmackDown and really assert his authority, firing plenty of very blatant shots at the Rock even stealing his catchphrases. And somebody said, Triple H has waited 20 years to drop that. It doesn't matter on The Rock. I'm sure he has. <laughs> well, I'm sure he after has. 22 years, and I mean, you had to have a comeback from Shut Up, Bitch, you know? So, I mean, why not? <laughs> Let me tell you something, bitch. Let me tell you something. We'll hear, we'll hear from the kingpin later on. Um, <clears throat> so, we're also going to get into Brock Lesnar, who Ugh. obviously has been kind of erased from WWE. Um Anywhere his picture was before, it's been taken down. He's not on the cover of the WrestleMania edition of 2K24 anymore. I doubt he's even going to be in the game, which no. kind of sucks because he's got quite a few historic moments at WrestleMania. Um, Brock and Goldberg, what a classic. We're going to lose that now. Oh, I was there for that <laughs> live. Man. I was there for that live. Oh, oh, now, wow. it's just going to be Stone Cold standing in the corner watching Goldberg hug nobody for 10 minutes did you see what someone posted on twitter <laughs> so they put that one time in 2003 when big show main evented a smackdown by himself <laughs> it was big show and brock against ben wine Cena. Oh, <laughs> oh god i did see that one that's perfect i mean uh. I mean, to agree to what you were saying there, Dazzer, you know, I mean, you look at what Brock has done, and I mean, from a stance too as well, I mean, it's crazy to think, like, also, like you mentioned, with them taking him off everything, they replaced L.A. Knight with him in the opening now. Which is great for L.A. Knight. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, it, it's, it's a really sticky situation. Wrong turn of phrase. It's a really tough situation that we found with Brock obviously getting mentioned in this whole Vince scandal, which I think we've talked enough about. Um, it's, okay, we're going to talk more about it soon. Yeah, oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we are when more and more stuff comes out. It's like a friggin' we've we found the end of the rainbow almost. Um, Pretty much. I get it. And at the same time, no, it's it's really a big piece of history that we're erasing. Because uh, Brock dude. has done so many... I mean, the streak, for one thing, that's one of the memes that's been going around. Oh, Brock's erased from history, so now the streak's intact, and they, they forget. Yeah, he also lost to Roman, so shut up. 
That friggin' Roman broke the streak. <laughs> that meme with Undertaker smiling, like, right. Hey. <laughs> yeah. In fairness, though, Roman beating Taker should have been Taker's last match, and it, it almost was until Vince was like, hey, Mark, you want another payday? For fuck's sake, Vince. You want a payday, pal? No, I just want to go fishing, man. He wants to go hunting. And now look at him. With Brock. He, he wants to go hunting with real. Brock. Oh, God. <laughs> And like you say, UFC, um, I mean, are they going to erase him from history now, too? It's not that they don't really push the history as much as WWE. WWE is all about look what happened in the past. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but Brock is a huge household name. That's the this, biggest knowing, problem. Knowing how Dana White thinks in his mindset, I don't see you. Oh, we don't give a shit. Yeah, probably. Don't give a shit. Hey, Brock, you want to do power slap? Oh, don't get he, me started. And that's the he end of the might. Federation. Yeah. Just might. Um, okay, on, on the good side of things, um, Okada does seem to be a done deal with AEW now. I mean, I know we were like, he's definitely going to AEW right from the beginning. And then, of course, that rumor came out he's going to NXT. And we were like, shut the fuck up. But, uh, hey. There was, a, there, there was some steam behind it. You got to <laughs> think about, as Rob put beautifully when we covered it, you got to think about the connection with Ultimo Dragon. Okay, in his WCW days and wanting to be in the Hall of Fame and how much love and how much, you know, time he's trained with Ultimo Dragon. Just that that right there. And then the all the, the unknown possibilities, all the matches we could see, the him versus AJ again, the you know, the Seth versus Okada, the you him know exactly like the just the the whole the whole gimmick of what he could do in WWE as opposed to AEW. Was interesting, especially to the TSK. But yeah, we we figured it was going to happen. He is very, very, very good friends with the Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's friends with Kenny. Believe it or not, even though people think they have that the yeah. skated rivalry. Best yeah. friends make the best enemies, as we know. It's the okay. truth. That and then the 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 obvious factor of the Will Osprey treatment, as he still gets to live in the UK. I'm sure Okada gets to still live in Japan. Yeah. Unless he wants to move to the States, which is on him, and it would be a poor decision. I mean, if he went to NXT, he would definitely have to move to the States because yeah. their schedule is barbaric. I mean, the move to Florida, I mean, you also have to think of the family aspect, too. I mean, we mm-hmm. talk about matches. I mean, if he was in NXT, I mean, we could see him and Ilya Dragunov. That would have been a possibility. Braun Breaker. Mm. There's so many people there. But, I mean, Mo, I think you'll enjoy this reference. I mean, if you put Kazuchika Okada in AEW, I mean, him and Samoa Joe, you can have something that would equate to, like, when Joe hey. fought Kenta Kabashi back in 2005. Hey. <laughs> so there's so there's a lot that they can incorporate with that. Fucking Larkin. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. And, and then, again, Okada already has a little bit of history in AEW already. Larkin's got some fucking TSK in him, that's for sure. Dude, I've seen the Joe and Kabashi, man. Watch early Ring of <laughs> Honor, folks, if you haven't. It's awesome. Oh, no, I have. I, I love Kabashi. Kabashi's the man. But it just it's the what Kabashi meant to Japan at that time is what you're referencing for somebody who's a little right. lost on this whole thing. It's the overall ultimate. I mean, everybody loves Naito. Let's not get it wrong here. Naito's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's not lie about that. But Okada, as I've said on numerous occasions, he is this day's, this modern, our modern era of Antonio Inoki. He is the end all be all. There are stars around him, but he is that motherfucker. Yeah, him and Joe just gives me all the vibes. All the vibes. I mean, you could do Kazuchika Okada and Takeshita, which would be fun. I mean, yeah, Takeshita star is rising. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. Fucking dynamite now. And him and uh, Will Ospreay is going to be sick. Well, we'll find out very soon in Boston. Oh, for I mean, can, can Tony like be any more <laughs> blunt and not even like hide the fact of B? We spelled boss with two S's. Oh my God. That's like, to, like I get to it. be fair, he didn't actually mention it and it is kind of tucked away on the poster, but obviously, no, it's not, it's not no, that unnoticeable. No, it's not. No, it's not. He, if you he, look at it really quick, you just go, hey, cool, Boston. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> he walked in. And he probably designed this thing himself. He walked in and was like, hey, guys, look, 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 look. And somebody was like, hey, that's kind of cool. Let's give it to the design department. Hey, but do you but do you see the thing? What? I put boss right there. This spot the difference. But, and he's like, <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Well, what the fuck is this guy doing? And oh, now they he, ran it. 
the man. He gave it to somebody and like, hey, Tony, you know there's only one S in Boston? No, they're not. I know. <laughs> that would be a, okay. that's a that's a total Tony Khan answer right there, too. Well, somebody <laughs> made a joke. It's like, you know how she likes to do at her autograph signings, like like the spaces away as we've seen in more photos. You think she'll actually give him a hug? Ever somebody made the joke. So <laughs> oh, yeah, TK one. likes his hugs. I don't think uh, he's going to get one from Mercedes. Nope. <laughs> not from her, Jack. Mercedes. Oh, hey, 200 bucks. <laughs> it's probably going to be like if you notice with like the ladies oh, at, the, at the media scrums, it'll probably just be like a handshake and that's it. The only person that gets to hug female wrestlers at will is CM Punk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True that. For some reason, I mean, chicks have always loved him. He's a chick magnet and he still is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what is it about this guy? Well, right. They just gravitate to him. It's funny you mentioned that. I remember like an interview years ago with Kayfabe commentaries. I think Maria, who he was there at the time, Maria Canellis was just like, oh, we just had that vibe. And I think just the straight edge lifestyle. And I think just there's some there's that vibe. I think that's the best way to say it. there's a vibe about him. Certainly, especially. Punk, Punk has a vibe and Phoenix is like, you must teach me. <laughs> teach me the vibe. Oh, boy. Feeney does kind of usually have a CM Punk thing going on. So, he, yeah, he wants to learn Punk's ways. That's right. He was rocking the mutton chops for a while. I remember that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, We are going to get into the contract signing in a little bit with the Kingpin and Cypher. Cannot fucking wait. But. All right, I'm here to address Phoenix in his stupid haircut looking like a lesbian going to a Lilith Fair concert. You know something, Phoenix? You like to bring up my past. And I self-adamantly admit I was a mean, angry, nasty, and unhinged person. You know it. I know it. Our peers know it. Lord knows it. But you see, that was 2020. This is 2024. But if you want to take it back to 2020, I'll hit you harder than COVID, kid. You see, Phoenix, it's no secret. You've beaten me, you've wounded me, you have scarred me. But the difference between you and I is I wear my scars proudly. I wear my scars like a badge of honor because it shows who I am, where I've been, and what I'm about. You know, Phoenix, I have clipped your wings before and I have cut you down. I have cut you like a doctor cuts an umbilical cord. And that is exactly what I'm going to do to you, Craig. I'm going to cut the cord. So... With all of that being said, my name is Michael Larkin. I am the podcast machine. And as always, it's my pleasure. But most importantly, it's your honor. And that, my friends, is the epitome and the true definition of leap of faith. I accept your challenge. Biatch! She... <laughs> okay, I, I think I'm composed. Holy, I can't. Okay, well, now that he's composed, uh, to quote Adam Pierce, it is official for the first time ever. The Phoenix goes one-on-one -on -one with Mike Larkin in a promo exhibition. They have perhaps the most storied history in match wrestling in trivia, going all the way back to 2016. But they have never faced each other in microphone combat, and we will talk to Mike about it in just a few moments. We can't wait. But it is double duty for the Cypher as he and the captain defend the Max Tag Team Champions in, in, du in duos trivia as their opponents, as the man they call Beer, will take on, of course, me, his partner, as we will go hands ball on you, some bitches. Let's get some gold back in the MDO. It's the only gold I got left. And I'm taking it from you. But don't trip, it's not towards I you. I feel it's like more fucking Rumpelstiltskin right now. Still. <laughs> Um, but if that doesn't work, uh, it is Dragon Club versus MDO for the television championship. Ooh. Can Chris Reed finally win that elusive title that he uh, chased me for all year? He tried twice, but now standing in his way is Travis Anderson. Anderson. I got all, I got all the confidence in Chris Reed. All the confidence in Nansa. And it's one more for the road. Cypher will defend the Max Wrestling World Championship <laughs> against the Doctor, the Kingpin in the Kingpin's first match in almost two and a half years. But after everything that has been said, it has gotten surprisingly personal, to say the least. And they will make it official in just a little bit. 
Yeah, uh, the, this was supposed to be a pit stop on the road to Promania, but it has become absolutely unmissable. It's two weeks away. Do not miss Leap of Faith on February 29th. Go to maxrossinnet.weebly.com slash leap for more information. Do it! It's wherever you drive. And before we get there, of course, the podcast machine is with us. Um, first of all, Phoenix's stupid haircut. He does. He looks like a lesbian going to a little affair concert. What the hell do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? He does. You son of a bitch. <clears throat> oh, what man. Say? I'm just saying. Look, Phoenix and I have done that trivia thing <laughs> for a long time. He's beaten me for the knowledge title. I've beaten him many a time. We've had week after week, dude. It's It's been a thing for like seven years. And now he wants to challenge me to the promo game. I'm fine with it. I'll do it. It came out of nowhere, but I'm fine. I'll do it. I'll be ready. I'll be ready to go. Dazzarino, I almost beat you. For, I know it almost doesn't count, but I almost beat you in 14 seconds less for that TV title. God damn it. We did our thing. So, I mean, hey, I'm still up in the mix. So, I'm glad to fit me out with Phoenix. Phoenix. Always wanted to yeah. do that. So it, it, did, it did come out of nowhere. You do have that much history. I didn't even realize you never had a promo bout against each other. It's so funny. Like when he brought that up, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. But then I thought to myself, <laughs> as I'm doing the promo, I'm like, is he actually going to see this when this records? Because I know he's far, far back. It's like, well, is he still in August or is it September? Like, is he, has he gone? To <laughs> it's like five, six months. He's about five, six months behind. Ah, and I love him. I love him to death. But yeah, he just came out and told me I'll be looking in front of my computer, bitch. Yes, 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 Phoenix. I'm looking at you straight into the camera. That's called the listening ev- a reaction and evoking emotions, man. See, he's getting me fired up about this, about me freaking looking into my camera. Yes, I'm looking at you, Phoenix. Who's looking at you? I'm like Robert De Niro and Meet the Parents. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. But no, I mean, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know what I'm saying, guys? It's going to be a stacked leap of faith. I mean, this is my first ever hey. event for a leap of faith. It's new, but yeah. I'm excited. That, that's really all I can say is that I'm excited about it. And Phoenix's stupid haircut. That's all I got to say. And he also broke, broke the fourth really, wall. Yes. Really quickly. Why is beer dumbass? Because him and Phoenix did that thing and he went over like eight minutes and he wanted that oh. knowledge title. And I'm like, I mean, I, and he's like, who cuts a two minute promo? And then he's like, oh, I'm here to tell you. And I'm like, why is his voice getting deeper? So, I mean, what is up with your boy beer? Because I like beer. I took him on a promo series. But what the hell is being dumbass? I don't know if Phoenix played it smart or if Phoenix just played it as he does because Phoenix doesn't do long promos. Maybe Beer overestimated him, uh, thinking everybody's going to go like five-ish minutes and then Beer cut a long promo uh, and, of course, lost by overtime. And I know this is ironic coming for me from the dude who used to do mini-movies, like 20 minutes, right. and I love doing that. <laughs> but here's the thing. sometimes He was straight to the point. Beer just went on and on and on, over and over again, like he's Nelly and Tim McGraw up in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean... Kudos to him, but man, don't be a dumbass. Now you don't have a knowledge title defense, you son of a bitch. You've been clamoring, you've been chasing, you've been wanting it. You know what I'm saying? And now you're nothing, nothing. But hey, at least he's got a tag title match with you and Mo against uh, Dazzy. That title, man, that's your only title, bro. Mm, I missed that title. I know. Uh, the TV title I'm talking about because, of course, now Travis has it. And, well, Beer has actually called Travis out to Promo Mania. Um, he thinks Travis is out on Masquerade. That's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, I, I don't know what to say about that. Beer. One, one last thing. Since you lost your TV title, I gotta ask you, Dazarina, are you the R-Truth and Max now? You want your baby back? You want your baby back? Ribs. Ribs. <laughs> mm. yeah. mm. it, I'm still sore. Still hurts. See, you're sour, man. You're sour. First he's sour, then he's sweet. Have have something, man. Eat something. Have a Snickers. I slept with that damn title. <laughs> I believe this. <laughs> and you know what, Trav? I didn't clean it first. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh. Shots fired. No, wait. Not like that. <laughs> I just mean, like, you know, sweat. sweat Maybe a few sure. tears. Sure. Nothing that's going to show up under a black light. What is this, Room Raiders? Are you going to get the spy kit for this? Allegedly. Jesus. Allegedly. All right, all right. Before I turn into Captain Crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not put that on a t-shirt. Um, we are going to go to a break in just a sec. And when we come back, it will be time for the contract signing. Actually, we do need to recap the shows first. So um, let's go to a break. And when we come back, it is all mayhem. on 
the good side and I've been on the dark side. I've sat on the jury and I've also been an outlaw. In the end, I had to do this for myself. Sometimes, you gotta take a leap of faith. Welcome back to the Captain Mo Show. This is your captain. He is El Jefe, and he is a podcast machine. Make sure you are liking and subscribed on YouTube. Follow us everywhere. And for all the information you need, go to maxrossingnet.weebly.com. Do it right now, but still to come. After last week's shocking revelation, the Kingpin is back for a face-to-face contract signing with the Cypher. Oh, God. That's why security's here. So, but before we do anything else, let's find out what went down in the world of wrestling since last Thursday. Let's kick it off with a total impact in three, two, one. Impact in three, two, one. So this week's impact kicked off with Chris Sabin picking up a win over John Skyler with the Cradle Shock. Tasha Steeles defeated Zaya Brookside with a Sunset Flip and a handful of tights. Backstage, ABC addressed the Grizzled Young Vets, but they're attacked by the Grizzled Young Vets. Jake Something confronts Frankie Kazarian backstage following Kazarian's recent actions. Zachary Wentz defeated Mike Bailey with a UFO cutter, and after the match, the Rascals attack Bailey, but Trent Seven makes the save. Steve Macklin then takes out Seven until Nick Nemeth arrives to even the odds. Following Crazy Steve's attack on Explosion, Rhino issued a challenge for the Digital Media Championship next week. Trinity and Jordan Grace defeated Savannah Evans and Giselle Shaw as Trinity hit the code red on Evans and followed up with a starstruck to get the tap out. And I believe this time it was Trinity's final appearance in TNA. AJ Francis is again looking for friends, this time in Dina, but they're interrupted by Joe Hendry, much to the disdain of Dina, who tells Hendry not to speak for him ever again. Khan squashes Richard Adonis and Ori Gold and continues attacking them after the match. PCO makes the save as Khan attacks his doctors and security, finally try to separate them. Josh Alexander defeated Alan Angels with an ankle lock, and after the match, Josh's celebration is cut short by a masked fan attacking him, who is revealed to be the debuting Simon Gotch. And in the main event, Alex Shelley defeated Eddie Edwards, dodging a Boston knee party to catch the pin, and after the match, Brian Myers attacks Shelley, Kushida runs down to help, followed by Kevin Knight wiping out the system from the top rope, as Shelley, Knight and Kushida stand tall to close the show. Let's go with SmackDown following the blockbuster WrestleMania press conference ending in a heated confrontation with The Rock and Roman Reigns. Triple H made it clear who calls the shots, or should I say Paul Triple H Levesque, as he's now full named. Uh, firing plenty of shots of his own at The Rock. Nick Aldis and Adam Pearce then announced that the challenger for Seth Rollins will be determined in the Elimination Chamber match between Randy Orton, Bronson Reed, Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, AJ Styles, The Miz, Bobby Lashley, Ivar, Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, Dominic Mysterio, and LA Knight, who will all be competing against each other to earn spots in the match. They've joined by Drew McIntyre, declaring himself as the person who saved WrestleMania for CM Punk's injury. With LA Knight on commentary, Drew McIntyre then defeated AJ Styles with a Claymore to earn his spot in the chamber, and no surprises as Bianca Belair defeated Michin to qualify for the women's elimination chamber, ending things with a KOD. It's announced that Roman Reigns and The Rock will both be on SmackDown next week. In the ring, Bailey addresses the breakdown of damage control last week before Dakota Kai comes out looking for answers. 
Bailey isn't sold on Kai and asks where she stands, but Io, Asuka, and Kairi interrupt ba uh, as Dakota Kai leaves the ring. With Bailey surrounded, Kai clears damage control off the apron with a steel chair, standing side by side with Bailey. Backstage, the Pride, now seemingly with BFAB, have their eyes on WrestleMania with Lashley looking to book his spot by taking that first step against Bronson Reed on Raw. And after last week's qualifiers, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne defeat DIY to earn a shot at the Judgment Day's Tag Team Championships with Dunne hitting the bitter end on Gargano. Backstage, Dominic Mysterio says it doesn't matter who the Judgment Day faces and promises to win the Elimination Chamber so that he can have a title that matches Mommy's. Kevin Owens interrupts and vows to beat him in honor of Rey Mysterio. Dom walks off as our truth arrives to tell Kevin Owens to make sure that Nick doesn't see him. Owens asks if truth means Nick Mysterio, and truth says no, Nick Aldis. And in the main event, which has left many concerned for Orton after showing signs of pain in his recently repaired back, the Viper defeated Sami Zayn with an RKO to qualify for the men's elimination chamber before having a stare down with Drew McIntyre. And now we're going in raw. The New Day and Jay Uso defeated the Imperium as Jay hits an Uso splash on Giovanni Vinci for the win. Andrade has big plans as he says in a vignette. He left WWE to find himself. Nothing to do with getting fired, because Vince couldn't understand him. But anyway, he's back. Bobby Lashley books his spot in the Elimination Chamber by defeating Bronson Reed with a spear. In the ring, Cody Rhodes addresses his decision to challenge Roman and The Rock's actions at the press conference before Seth Rollins joins him in the ring. The two former rivals seem to have bonded over bringing down Roman Reigns as Rollins declares himself Cody's shield. It's announced that Jey Uso will challenge for the Intercontinental Championship next week and one can only suspect foul play in order to carry us through to WrestleMania. Liv Morgan defeated Zoe Stark with Oblivion to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. Backstage, our truth is trying to get hold of The Miz for backup, but um, as it's match time, Adam Pearce sends him to the ring. And I think we can all understand why The Miz wasn't there and I'm sure... You all join me in uh, wishing the best news possible for Maurice. Um, JD McDonough then defeats our truth with the devil inside, and after the match, the Judgment Day attacks Truth. Uh, with, but it's DIY with chairs that make the save, and Truth later mistakes them for DX. In the ring, Becky Lynch raises a glass of lemonade to Rhea Ripley's last few weeks as champion. She's interrupted by Nia Jax, who uncharacteristically endorses Lynch to win the chamber but vows to take the title from Ripley at Elimination Chamber and meet Becky Lynch at Wrestlemania. Out comes Ripley who attacks Jax and inadvertently spills Becky's lemonade in the corner as Jax is knocked out of the ring. Ripley and Becky stare each other down. In an Elimination Chamber qualifying match LA Knight defeated Ivar with a BFT for the win. I really don't know why we have these qualifiers when it's obvious who's going to qualify. But anyway, in the main event, Shinsuke Nakamura defeated uh, Sami Zayn with a Kinshasa after a distraction from Drew McIntyre. They beat down Sami Zayn after the match, and it is Cody Rhodes, of course, who makes the save. And now before we get to AEW, it's time for another round of beer with NXT. Hey guys, this is Beer with the NXT round. Oh my goodness me, what an action-packed show that we had this week. NXT kicks off with Vaughn Wagner and Mr. Robert Stone attack Noam Dar and Oromensa. And not in the parking lot this week, it's in the locker room area. Leads to kicking off with the tag team match between Noam Dar and Oromensa against Vaughn Wagner and Robert Stone. And Oromensa and Noam pick up the victory after interference again from Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend. Impressive from Mr. Stone, as he has not wrestled properly since being Robbie E and TNA. Chase U have all their stuff placed back in their possession, and with a passionate speech from Andre Chase, 
with Duke having his MVP trophy back, and he looked ecstatic. God bless him. Adriana Reza arrived and got handled, handled, got given a bag from JC Jane. Is it possibly money? Her cut from that smoking hot count, by the way. Still can't get it. Bit of a shit house, really. Rich Holland runs the gauntlet against the three Gallus boys. Can the big man do it? Wolfgang begins and gets pinned by Ridge. Mark Coffey then enters, makes the most of Ridge's knee injury. Ridge goes for the cover after taking out Mark Coffey. Joe Coffey pulls out Ridge, leads to a disqualification, which I was a bit disappointed because I'm starting to really get into the match. Ridge fights off all the Gallus boys, but steals her and nails four chair shots on Joe Coffey just after the Gallus boys were doing a three on one attack. Von Wagner and Robert Stone were shown backstage after that very tough loss. And then <laughs> the man who's always there, Alexis King, appears and provokes the big man and Robert Stone by calling, <laughs> calling Robert Stone and Von Wagner a bunch of losers and said he failed in front of Mr. Stone's kids. How AEW fumbled this guy, I will just never know. I said Chelsea Green was the best re signing in 2023. Alexis King now, I think, could be the signing of 2023, and I can see. An incredible 2024 for Lexus King. Lola Vice defeats Tatum Paxley by submission. After two mad kicks to the face of Tatum Paxley, she actually kicked out and looked like she was literally out of it at one stage. Then, big chokehold by Lola. Tatum has no choice to, to tap out. She was carried to the bat by Lola, by Lyra Valkyrie, I beg your pardon. Long term booking to the inevitable heel turn by Tatum on Lyra, which for me I think will be the match at Stand and Deliver. The dawn of NXT, Tony D and Stax get themselves prepared for the tag team main event. Adriana Reza also shown preparing for a match with Jada Parker. Lyra Valkyria and Tatum Pax will be shown backstage. Tatum styling to get him back to the grips of life after that brutal match she had with Lola. Shotzi Blackheart was there, shown, and after a little back and to exchange on Twitter, the match is got us on for next week between Lyra Valkyria and Shotzi Blackheart. Jada Parker defeats Ariana Rizzo in a very good match. It was actually a very good, impressive showing from these two young ladies. You can see a good future for these two. Jada was just too good on the night and gets the one, two, three. Then we see Dominic Dijakovic shown watching the ending of that main event with Lady Dragunov with Joe Gacy punching Dijak right in the face. And then, <laughs> Carmelo Hayes enters the building with the chorus of boos you could ever see. Now, it's not Tommaso Ciampa boos from the days of black and gold, but the boos were overwhelming. Carmelo Hayes defeats Joe Gacy, and it was a very good match with the nothing but net. Dijak then appears in the ring, takes out Joe Gacy, but leads to Joe Gacy being put in a straight jacket by Dominic Dijakovic. Melo's showing so much aggression since that incredible heel turn. For me, I think Dijak and Gacy will have another match. For me, leave it to stand and deliver. Just make it a cage match or something like that. And even Joe Gacy was even seen laughing in a damn straight jacket. I mean, who would laugh at the rent of bloody straight jackets? And yet again, a mysterious vignette plays for a possible return or debut. Now, last week, I got jumped the gun a bit when I'm thinking it was uh, Kazuchika Ricarda. Now, we know it's pretty much a done deal. Kazuchika Ricarda is going to AEW. Now, there's possible candidates for me. I think it's either going to be Julia or a lot of people told me this on Twitter. I think it could be Bo Dallas. Now, we haven't seen Bo Dallas since the last appearance that we saw of the late Bray Wyatt. So we have not seen Uncle Howdy since then. Will Uncle Howdy or Bo Dallas be the man behind the vignette? Obi Femi's in the ring, talks about his plans as a North American champion, praises Dragon Lee for a very good effort at Vengeance Day, then to be interrupted by Alexis King, leads to a match next week for these two for the North American Championship. Keanu James defeats Br Brindley Reese with a bankrupt. Good showing by young Brindley. Then she's seen back so he's fired up with Malik Blade and Idris Anof. Now, Brindley Reese, I think, will be going places. Use her properly, Mr. Michaels. He'll be fine. But again, Shawn Michaels showing so much faith in that women's division. Something that the previous administration didn't do. Triple H is using that women's division well. And so is Shawn Michaels. So we've got to praise them for this. Ava... 
Ava Rain confirms that Roxanne Perez will face Brand Sinclair after an earlier confrontation in the back, as well as Big Josh Briggs will be taking on Brooks Jensen after the two former best friends were brawling backstage. And now we get to the main event. Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin against Tony Giangelo and Chang Stax Renzo. For me, one of the matches of the year. The tag match was unbelievable. Now, it's not DIY against the Revival from TakeOver Toronto 2016 by any stretch of the imagination, but the match was absolutely fantastic. The best I've ever seen Baron Corbin. The best I've seen him for years. So, out of five, I give the show a solid 3.5. But I changed my mind. I give it a four for that main event. I would give it a five, but still a little bit of things to be worked on with uh, NXT. But the card next week looks juiced. We got Briggs against Jensen. We got Roxy against Ren. Lyra and Shotzi. Oberfemi and Lexus Gang. My goodness me. Shawn Michaels has got something cooking in that kitchen. Now it's time to go to last night at Dynamite. Last night. All right, last night on Dynamite. Uh, so, kicked it off with John Moxley versus Jax Hardwood catching a diving headbutt into a rear naked choke as Mox refuses to release the hold. Cash jumps uh, jumps in before Claudio Castagnoli attacks Cash. Mox reapplies the hold uh, on Dax. BBC leaves uh, laying uh, FTR uh, leaving them laying out. I have to talk about the awesomeness that's going to be happening. Uh, all the BCC is going to Mexico. For anybody who's curious, they're going to Mexico. Um, they're going to be going working to Titty Twisted. With- Pity Twister, that's right. I'm working with like Blue Panther. I think Ultimo, uh, was it uh, Ultimo Guerrero is going to be out there. They're going to be working with. So it's it's a star-studded thing, and this is the biggest star. This these four guys are going to be the biggest stars Mexico has seen. Not Triple A, not CML. Mexico has seen in quite some time. So it is very yeah. very exciting. And no Alberto El Patron. At, oh, no, 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 fuck that guy. Backstage. <laughs> Backstage with Rene, uh, Don Callis announces it's due to knowing one in the face to catch Stein Hobbs. He is putting his two stable men uh, against each other. It'll be Will Ospreay against Takeshita at Revolution, and it just has banger written all over it. Wardlow, for a guy who I thought tore his knee a couple of weeks ago, just murders some guy named Barrett Brown because that's what Wardlow does. And it, it, one of these days it'll work. It's just not working on me. With Daddy Magic on commentary, we need a lot more of this. Adam Copeland locks in, uh, locks in. Daniel Garcia in the grindhouse, but is attacked by Nick Wayne in Kill Switch. Daddy Magic attempts to stop Christian Cage by grabbing a chair, or grabbing a chair, but gets knocked out himself. That's when the whole stable attacks Danny Garcia with uh, Copeland uh, makes the save with his own chair. He has Cage cornered, gets low blowed from Mama Wayne, who is just be- playing her role beautifully, if I can say that myself. They all beat the shit out of Adam Copeland, resulting in a concerto. Leading, obviously, to, I'm sure, they're going to have, like, a one-week build to a TNT title match at Revolution. Then we get the greatest thing ever, which is just Samoa Joe. Well, I, besides the press conference. Samoa Joe in the ring, <laughs> dressing at two challengers at Revolution. He is interrupted by Swerve, then by Hangman, who gets in Swerve's face. Kept saying that you couldn't beat me, so you don't deserve to be here. Samoa Joe comes between them, wants no excuses. He says, he says my name is Samoa Joe, and I'm going to beat both your asses at Revolution. Love Samoa Joe. He's the greatest man ever in the whole wide world. This vignette, I don't know who's doing the editing <laughs> for Tony Storm. They need a raise and a, and a, and a, and a better parking spot. And a better parking spot. Okay? <laughs> so yeah. this vignette has is showing Tony Storm in this just dramatically cut, supposed to kind of be 50s, like, I don't even know what, like, just like ragtag or whatever. Just It's, it's supposed to be comedy-ish, and all it is is she's... Um, defiling the tattoo that her and Diana Prazo got. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're probably going to you know, match him or whatever, but it's awesome building towards the story with her and Diana Prazo going down in, uh, at Revolution for the AEW Women's Championship. Backstage, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson arrived in very old, blood-stained suits from last week. They then go on to defeat Top Flight in what was relatively like a 60-40 match. I thought it was going to be a squash. It wasn't. Uh, They are then interviewed by Skiavone. They declare themselves the number one contenders. uh, Tell Tony that it's a thousand dollar fine for them being disrespectful because of all the shit he's been talking uh, on the commentary booth. Even said that they would, uh, was defamation to character that they would sue him. And I'm just like, oh my God, they're playing this up and it's working off. It's working off uh, beautifully. Um, 
Nick Nicholas, I got, don't, don't want to get fined myself. Nicholas shoves down Skiavone. They go to hit him with the EVP trigger. Darby comes out to make the save. They pretty much make the match official. He almost drops Cody Rhodes' name as, you know, talking about the EVPs that believed in him, mainly leaning at uh, Kenny because they couldn't say Cody. So it'll be him and Sting against the Bucks at Revolution for the tag titles. If the writing is not on the wall, I don't know what is. But then again, I've always said the best way to get the belts over is with a tournament. That way you get everybody's eye, everybody gets eyes on everybody in the division. B. And Tony likes his tournaments. That he does. We go back backstage with Renee, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. I love these guys. They uh, love cutting each other off as well, which is the greatest thing ever. Freaking uh, Austin's like, we we should have a match on Rampage on Saturday. And Billy Gunn's like, hey, we should have a match on Rampage. Ah! <laughs> Everybody goes bananas. It's the greatest thing ever. I love this. Don't ever stop this. Uh, and when you do, I'm probably going to cry. Willow Nightingale is absolutely amazing. Sky Blue is getting better by the freaking week. Uh, she does lose, however, to a devastating power bomb after uh, Stokely distracts Aubrey to stop uh, Sky from getting a win. Obviously, Stokely Hathaway possibly turning Willow Nightingale heel. I don't know how that's going to happen. She's the most bubbly person you've ever seen. She's on the level of Bailey bubbly. You know what I'm saying? I, I and uh, whoever's running the cameras. Face. One more time. I take it as Stokely turning face. Maybe. He's, nice. he's just simping for Chris and Willow. Can you blame him? No. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was just going to say, Chris Stylander needs to wear regular clothes all the time because hot damn. Yeah. Hot damn. Mm -mm -mm. And I, I, I promise you they have set cameramen for Sky Blue matches because some of these cuts mm. are a, a little too uh, obvious, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But way. in the main event, boy. In the main event, Texas Death Match, Orange Cassidy gets busted open deep somewhere in between taking an elbow drop through a table and getting suplexed through another table. These were shoot tables, by the way. These yeah, were I shoot tables. I rewound like three times between those two spots, and I couldn't find where he got busted open, but it was in between those two spots. All I, all I know is he came up leaking and leaking bad. Matt Taven uh, took a crazy dive through a table, fucking full send, as we called it in the in the TSK. Uh, Orange pulled a box of uh, Valentine's Day chocolates. It was a gift from Chucky. It was thumbtacks. Gotta love the thumbtacks. Then there was another box that was just a box, and then... Trent comes down like the fucking Terminator and Terminator 2 has this box of roses instead of a shotgun. It's a pipe. And I loved it. I was just, I fucking, I was like a child all over again. Uh, the mustacheless Roderick Strong comes out to join the fray. It's a little too late as Mavin, uh, um, Ta Matt Taven, I almost called him Taven Matt, uh, was down for the 10 count, giving, uh, letting Orange Cassidy to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Roddy, how dare you? cut your mustache that you should never have done that that's the greatest thing besides hangman's <clears throat> mustache but it just builds more towards roddy probably winning at revolution i yeah. think probably um i fucking love this man i know tsk loved the death matches i'm not much of a death match guy i like a little bit of violence i like some hardcore matches but man i fucking love this main event yeah it was fun great spot oh, and yeah orange cassidy bleeding like a motherfucker i mean that was weird and you know what? I didn't even make that connection with the Terminator 2 shotgun in the roses box. That was great. You're welcome. <laughs> I pulled out. I pulled the mic. I pulled the mic. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised Mike didn't make that reference. Nowhere. First of all, number one, it's early in the morning. And number two, yes, Terminator <laughs> 2 Judgment Day. But also, no, what I liked about it, too, to go on his point there, it's like I'm not much of a deathmatch guy like myself. But, I mean, if you could have something like back in the day when you had Cactus and Terry Funk slam each other on nails and the King of the Deathmatch tournaments. But if you can also add a little bit of the hardcore vibes to it, yes, Mixed with it, I mean, for its purpose as well, just because these two have this view that they have going on. But also, if you're in Texas, the Texas death match, really everything gets settled there. I mean, is it anything like we saw in TNA, TNA back in 07 with Chris Harris and James Storm? No, but what we had here was very nice, and it was subtle, and it was intricacies and nuances all in one. So it was pretty, it was good. Good stuff. And uh, Orange Cassidy breaking his balls for that company once again. Oh, Dude. man. Give that man a raise. <laughs> and then some. Somebody should that man a, gave that man a bandage or a couple of stitches. That boy's face was leaking. Yeah, that's why I was so intent on finding out where he got cut because I was like, "What the fuck caused that?" It couldn't have been a table spot because he just got put no, through a table. No, the boys think maybe he gigged as they were hitting the floor. Yeah, because after just... the first table hit, Taven did lay in a few punches. Maybe that was supposed to be where he got cut open. Yeah, but I mean, it fucking leaking. Boys got a little worried. They thought he hit a vein or something. Everybody got shot. Right? <laughs> it was bad. 
man. It was like Boys in the Hood. Ricky! Ricky! <laughs> he came out looking like Kyle Grimes. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> God. First things first, I like to say what we're not going to do is make a mockery of the world title that has so been graciously fought for, defended, and held with honor, integrity, and dignity. This right here is what it's all about. So I'm going to go and up to Annie because I think there's one person that might actually give me that challenge. So how about it, Kingpin? You ready for the world title? So obviously the elephant in the room is a challenge from Corey that was laid down uh, a couple weeks ago. We haven't seen you on the show since well, two and a half years now. Um, and obviously we did see you with the Maxis showing some love to Corey for the Lionheart Award. It was my honor, honestly, to show some love to Corey. Man, I'm so proud of that guy. Um, just an incredible, ferocious competitor. And um, he's not just a great competitor here on this show, but he's a great competitor in life. And he's the kind of person that when he's facing adversity, he's not gonna take that shit laying down. He stands up. When life takes a swing at him, he swings right the fuck back. And um, I found him to be very genuine, very authentic, and very inspiring. I don't really respect him. He's the champion? Are you si that are you serious? That's how bad things have gotten over there? It's clear that he can't see me. That's who John Cena was talking to when he said, you can't see me. <laughs> he was talking about Corey, because he's blind, get it? <laughs> he can't see. Oh my God, Corey's blind. I got a lion heart war because I'm blind. <laughs> What's going on here, man? There's some sort of ambush with some bullshit video that you want to show me? What's going on, man? What do you guys think it is that makes this kid, Corey Cypher, your champion, think that he could stand toe to toe? That he deserves to even be breathing the same air as me? It's easy to be the best thing going today when the kingpin is not in the building. But the moment that the kingpin shows up, you just got moved all the way to the back of the line. I want this kid face to face with me next week. I do accept this challenge to explain to him all the ways that I'm going to fucking ravage him and break his bones and make him regret ever speaking the name Kingpin. Was it contract signing? That kind of thing? Yeah. I want to put ink to fucking paper. And if he's not too much of a fucking bitch, we'll see if he's willing to do the same. Okay, we are joined by the Max Wrestling World Champion, Cypher, and uh, we're about to bring on the Kingpin, but we wanted to give you a couple of moments first before we bring him in, obviously, after what happened last week. Uh, and we have security in the form of Mike Larkin. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. And if things get really spicy, the cat's claws come out. Hey, oh, you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> but now, um... Warning to yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this may get tense. Uh, it may be even more intense than Dwayne and Cody. Uh, and no questions from Dave Meltzer and uh, Brian Albatross. No, thanks. Hmm. So, Corey, man, you got the floor. He went at you hard last week. You got anything to say about it before he gets on here? Well, I mean... The guy's been sitting at home for, what, two and a half years? Obviously, PMSing at the fact that I'm world champion and he's not. So, not going to get worked up. Not too mad about it. I've overcome adversity before, so this ain't nothing new. I mean, I'm cool, calm, collected. I got what I need right here and whatever Amir has to say. We're just going to let it roll off the shoulder. All right, then. Well, let's find out what he does have to say. Let's uh, put pen to paper or graphics to screen as it were because this is a digital sign in and uh, let's bring in the kingpin all right both competitors are in the digital room we are about to make the contract signing official um after last week the kingpin accepted the challenge to challenge the world champion cypher at leap of faith um 
Cypher didn't have much to say before you joined. Uh, I think he was probably waiting for you guys to be face to face. So uh, does anybody have anything to say after last week? Oh, you bit like me? Yeah, I got plenty to say. First off, I'd like to start out with an apology. You know, um, it took me a little longer to get in here than I wanted it to, because despite the fact that I am the king, for some reason, I had to park way, way in the back. And um, I don't know what that's about, but I just don't think it's fair that you know, Corey gets to park right up in the front because he's got that handicap placard and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to figure out what is it, what is it going to take for the king to get the treatment that he deserves? Why does Corey get special treatment? Can anybody answer that question? Mike Larkin, you you have a history of being super good with knowledge. Can you maybe can you maybe answer that question? Well, if you look at someone like Corey Coulter who came in in 2020 and really rose from the rankings, man, I think his overall attrition and his overall tuition if you will of wanting to go out there and tell the story and put on a damn good contest much like yourself amir i think but in this particular realm he's the consistency and you have been the inconsistency so he's trying to you know go at you man go at your heart go at your heart in the paint if you will rain a fire like apache helicopters if you will mr amir costello much like you were back in the 2018 2019 uh, time frame if you will so i mean he's just trying to like pretty much do what you are but amplify it and do it a whole lot better in layman's terms, ladies and gentlemen, you old and he not. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Um, Mike Clarkin, you know what? Fuck you. I gotta say, it's it's so good to see you. Same um, it's some it's something probably nobody's ever said to you because it would be a lie if they said it. And I don't even know why I threw it to you because the truth is, I don't care what you think. I've never cared what you thought. And um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I'm probably a little bitter because. I've never, ever, ever, ever beaten you when it comes to uh, to knowledge, but I think you got this one wrong. And and Corey, I noticed you're sitting there in the back and you're not saying much. Now, are you okay back there? There's, I'm not sure if you can see me, but follow the sound of my voice, Corey. Follow, can you, can somebody get Corey facing the right direction? Corey. Oh, oh no, I can see you perfectly, Amir. And you know, hearing you talk, you don't sound much like a king anymore. It sounds like you lost your balls and became the queen now. So, I mean, whatever you got to say really doesn't matter because I'm the workhorse and you've been put out the pasture. So, to take a little note from Mike Larkin's book, you the old busted joint and I'm the new hotness. Men in black too, baby. The new hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, Agent J and Agent K. Hey, speaking of shit that's super old. There's these two rappers, right? Uh, one is called T.I., or what's known as Tip. And um, he was having a beef with Lil Flip. Anybody, Mike Larkin, you might be familiar with this, but um, for some reason you, you grew up black. I don't know how it worked. Um, <laughs> okay. T.I. and Lil Flip had a beef. Back in yes. the day, I remember 2004, we'll say. <laughs> and I remember they were going back and forth and stuff like that. And at some point... T.I., who will say in this example is me, you know, so he, he called himself the king of the South. Yeah. And he was he was whooping Lil Flip's ass and Lil Flip. He couldn't take it. He didn't know what to do. He was overwhelmed by the king. Corey, you might understand what that feels like. And so for some reason, unbeknownst to everybody in the hood and Mike Larkin, Lil Flip went and called his daddy. And then his daddy got on and started talking about T.I. and making a big fuss. And T.I. and everybody in the hood was real confused by that. They said, why, why would this man bring his daddy into the picture? So the king said to Lil Flip, why the fuck would you call your daddy? And Lil Flip's answer was, it's not my fault my dad came to defend me. And uh, I thought that that was weak as fuck. And everybody thought that that was weak as fuck. So, Corey Cipher, Max Wrestling Champion, man that's supposed to be able to stand on his own, carry the show. I mean, you got the belt and everything. You the man, right? You the new hotness. Right. Yet, just a few days ago, you called Joe Daddy, didn't you? Because I sat there being disrespected on the weekend when I was just trying to enjoy some of the royalties of being the king. And it was brought to my attention that Travis 
Anderson. Anderson. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yo daddy pulled up in his car carrying his little championship belt. And y'all, y'all sat around and had a good old time, didn't you? Trying to take shots at the king. So can you please explain for the people, if you're so strong and you're the new hotness, because you look around, I ain't got nobody with me, bro. I'm the whole crew, bro. I'm all that's needed. Why you bring your daddy into this? Well, first of all, we all know that me and Travis go way back, like four flats on the Cadillac. We brothers. We know how to respond. We know how to have each other's back, which is something you're not familiar with, because where is your crew? Two and a half years of sitting in the back, man. Where'd your crew at? You had, you had everybody in the palm of your hand, and you let them slip out of your fingers like butter, baby. But before you say, my daddy, you got to understand something. He didn't come here just to defend me. He came here because he seen what you said. We all seen what you said. You came at my disability. You got everybody heated, bro. Have you not been listening? Have you not been paying attention? Your words ain't shit around here no more, homie. You've been sitting on your ass for two and a half years doing what? Playing doctor. Being Dr. Mario. Playing Operation. Calling yourself Mr. Black Blaine Costello. Dog, get the fuck out of here with that. You ain't done nothing to earn this. But I seen an opportunity to call out the best which I thought that I was going to get, but it seems like to me, Benitez has got the better of you, baby. So let me ask you this. Are you sure you ready for this level of competition again? Because it seems to me like you got a whole lot of excuses. You want to bring up the fact that people came to my aid, but where's your people at? You abandoned your kingdom two and a half years ago, and now you just a lone king sitting there playing with yourself. Thank you. You still on top. It's a damn shame. Hate to see it happen, but if I had to say anything, I'm Eminem and you Benzino now, dog. Oh, Benzino. I'm just the king. I'm just at the top. Where is everybody else? The question, Cypher, is when have I actually ever needed anybody else? If you had ever actually been at the top, then you would understand the expression that that's where it is the most lonely. Because as I rise and I rise and I rise, the people beneath me, they get further and further away. I can hardly see them. That's why my old ass had to get these glasses. But you know what? I don't mind being lonely at the top. I don't mind being by myself. It's good air up here. I don't have to share it with anybody. Certainly not people like you. Now, before we go a step further, I want to try to take the time to define Corey Cypher. Because, you know, I was sitting here, I was thinking, like, what exactly is Corey Cypher? And I didn't really just want to go off my opinion, because my opinion is that you fucking suck. And I didn't really want to go off Mike Larkin's opinion, because Mike Larkin fucking sucks. Mike Larkin, when I woke up this morning, I thought to myself, I really hope I get a chance to say to Mike Larkin, fuck you. And then lo and behold, poof, here you are in this call. It means so much to me. I'm going to have a great day after this. But Corey Cypher, I looked up you on the internet, and it brought me to the Oxford Dictionary. Daz, you know Oxford, don't you? Isn't that in the little land you come from? It's from the neighbors. Okay, all right. We don't have to be English. I just want to be clear about something. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have made this up. In the Oxford Dictionary, if you look up the word cipher, it literally says a person, that would be you, Corey, or thing of no importance, <laughs> especially a person who does the bidding of others and seems to have no will of their own. Corey, uh, the dictionary says you ain't shit. How do you explain that? I see what you did there. And it's all, and it's funny you should say that because I remember years ago I had a match with um, a real wrestler, say, and she used the same terminology as well. So let me go ahead and break it down for you. There's two different spellings in the word. Now that may be C I P H E R, and that means nothing, but C Y P H E R means everything. 
I didn't get to the top by just, you know, riding somebody's coattails. I had to break away. I had to become my own man, and I had to fight for everything that I've gained. And what have you gained in the last two years, doctor? Oh, yeah, more weight. Sitting up there, look like a baked potato. Don't come at me, dog. You need to understand something. Two and a half years you've been sitting at home, I've been grinding. I've been hustling. And I, I, and I fought my way to talk to get this belt. So you can sit there and say I'm not important. But I've been running the show, bro. I've been showing everybody how it's done. I've been a total workhorse. By you being a total jackass. So, I mean... Whatever you got to say at this point is irrelevant, homie. It's what you do when it comes to sign that contract. What you going to do? You going to run for another two and a half years? Or are you going to finally step up and be the man everybody think you are and accept the challenge? You know, Corey, that was, you had a little bit of fire in you just now. It was good to see a little life out of you. And, um, but you used a word that is, is improper irrelevant i'm anything but irrelevant i'm all the relevance let's not forget you you called my name okay just like all the bitches do okay you came looking for me just like everybody does there's a reason why you want to fight the fucking kingpin you switched the spelling of your name you said don't go with the ci go with the cy okay C-Y-P-H-E-R, Cypher. That's really a reference to hip-hop, isn't it? You know, when a couple of guys stand around in a group, maybe on a call just like this, and they pass words back and forth. But, you know, when you're battling in a Cypher, the whole point is to kill that Cypher. And I've come back after two and a half years, as you keep bringing up, with one goal in mind. And that specifically is to kill you. And I got to tell you, I might be a big boy, but this is going to be the easiest thing I've ever fucking done in my life. Okay. So here's a question. Get up in the morning. That's the easiest thing you ever done. Come on. I made you relevant again because ain't nobody been talking about you for the last two and a half years. I brought your name up with respect because I wanted to face the best. But it seems like to me, I ain't getting the best. I'm just getting bitch ass, black bane, bitter, Costello. That's what I got. It's a tad bit disappointing, but at the same time, this is what I wanted. And I get what I want. So, hey, it is what it is, partner. I, I appreciate that. I really love the fact that you brought me up out of respect. And I want you to know something. I'm so happy to be here to disrespect you. I couldn't wait to come on this show and disrespect you. I was giddy. My wife was confused. What are you so happy about? What did, did you did you get some extra pay? What's going on? Did you get a, did you get a did you get a promotion at work? I said no, baby. This ain't got nothing to do with work. You don't understand. Tomorrow morning when I get up, I get to disrespect Corey Cipher. And then we sat around and we hugged and we laughed and we sipped on some champagne. Because we both thought it would be fantastic that we get up here and slap you in your fucking face, okay? Question. Sure. I, I got a question. So, when you went to bed last night and you woke up this morning, the first thing you had on your mind was me? That's a little sus, homie. Don't you think? It's something you gotta, it's something you gotta tell us, man. Are you obsessed with me? What what is it, dog? Cause that ain't cause in today's world, bro. If you if you if you hey, bro. I mean, I ain't ju no judgment here. I'm just saying you thinking about another man in the morning, bro. I mean, that's some old Baron Corbin shit. Or Bron. Before this gets off the rails and you start questioning the king's sexuality, what's the point of all this, Corey Cipher? What what? Why exactly am I here? I've agreed to face you. And I wanted to tell you face to face that I was going to whoop your ass. And I've done that, whether or not you could see me on this screen. So tell me, what exactly is in it for me? 
Why should I even do this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat today because, you know, whether or not that I can see the screen or not, I've done some research here lately, Amir. That's right. Uh, okay. I'm going to share it here today with everybody on Mac. So I hope you are buckled up, boys, because here we go. So recently, I found something about, found something out about Amir. I found out that his once prized possession that he once lost had been regained. Not going to go into details, not going to tell you how I found this out, but see, this is what I was thinking. And, you know, maybe this will pique your interest. This might even ruffle your feathers. But see, I'm putting a title on the line, right? So it's only fair that the kingpin put something on the line. And I think you know where I'm going with this, Amir. If I win, I get your prize possession and I take your crown. You want you want my crown? <laughs> I may be blind, but I'm not deaf. I said I want the crown. Well, the, the jury might be out on that. Who knows all the disabilities you have? <laughs> Nice-ass parking space. We're going to talk about that, Daz. We're going to talk about that shit. Okay, let me tell you something, Corey. I don't fear you at all. I don't fear you. I don't respect you. And I just want to say one more time for the people in the back who park next to me, I don't fucking like you. Put the crown up. I will do that. I'm happy to do that. Because there's literally 0% chance that I could ever, ever lose to a guy like you. And I... I want to be very clear about something. No offense to, uh, you know, the cap and no offense to Mo, because I do like you guys and I respect you guys. I don't give a shit about the Max Wrestling Championship. I don't actually want that belt. But you know what? I don't want it. But I just don't want Corey to have it because I just don't think he deserves that shit. I just don't think he's worthy of it. And so I will take this from you. I will take it from you simply because I can simply because I don't think you should have it. And when I'm done with it, hell, maybe I'll go on some other show and toss the belt in the trash and see if that doesn't ruffle the feathers of your crew and all your people. But when that happens, Corey Cipher, when you show up at Leap of Faith and you get your ass absolutely kicked by the kingpin and the easiest effort I've ever put out, please do not forget you wanted this. Oh, I'm not going to forget, but a hey. I hate to tell you, man, but when you lose that crown, dog, because I know what type of power that crown has, and it's uh, and it's been worn by a corrupt king. So allow me to do one more. If this was Robin Hood versus King John, bro, I'm stealing all your riches, and I'm giving it back to the people of Max. And that crown, that crown just be the cherry on top. Besides, I don't think it fits your head anymore, dog. I mean, it good like it gained some weight too. I'll see you at Leap of Faith, Cipher. I will see you there. Have a nice day, sweetheart. Now, since right. I have my player's card, may I just add two second to my two cents here for a second here? Shoot. Since Amir wants to come over here acting like one of Bay Bay's kids come to life, I have find it very funny that he wants to talk about knowledge game and all that. May I add Promo Slam 2019? I just wanted to put that out there because I will remind you that every single day of your life, sir. That's all I got to say about that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mike, Mike, Michael Larkin. Michael <laughs> Larkin. Let me tell you something about you, Michael Larkin. Wait, hang on, let me do it because I know it's pops you. Let me tell you something, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to change my catchphrase to, let me tell you something, Cypher, and everybody will know that it actually means bitch. Mike Larkin, I beat you. I beat you. I want everybody to know that. The, the, Mike Larkin, who, who was impossible to beat, who was impossible to beat, and who was the guy that beat you? Well, that would be me. And then you know what I did, Mike Larkin? To what make you sure you would never, you would never get one back up on me. What? I then never gave you another opportunity <laughs> you're never gonna beat me bitch because i beat you and you should have got it done when you had the chance but you can't 
You can't get it done because it can't be done. Are you paying attention, Corey? It can't be done. Never say never, man. It, things are all things are possible through Christ who strengthened me, and all the King's Morses and all the King's men ain't gonna be able to put your bitch ass back together again when I'm done. Baby boy, don't forget what Batman said, okay? When it comes to to bringing up a higher power, what never swear to God. Never, never swear to God. Instead, swear to me. I did say that. Oh, <clears throat> um, I didn't think it was possible for him to get more heated than he was last week, but uh, hey, you know what they say, baked potatoes got to be heated. I heard that. I think it's the best case, folks. Of uh, someone's got to come correct that leap, of <clears throat> to put it bluntly, and we shall see how that goes. Wow. Um, well, digital signatures will be added, and I will get my lawyer. I think you guys know his name to check them over. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, that is official for Leap of Faith. The main event is set as Cypher defends the World Championship against the Kingpin. Dr. Kingpin. Dr. Mario. <laughs> <clears throat> also, don't talk to me about parking spaces. You ain't seen this town. Right. Also... You know, if you if you get like a, a four by four, you can park wherever the fuck you want, or an Audi or a BMW, park wherever the fuck you want. I just want to know if, we, if, uh, if our like logistics people told him that we had parking for employees in the back. <laughs> well, he needs to walk anyway. He's yeah, oh. He's trying to get a little bit hefty, hefty, hefty. So walking ain't gonna kill. Damn. Show my score. It is time for the final two segments of the week. Um, and I'll be very surprised if a certain name doesn't get pulled up on the Twattermeter. But let's put some points on the board. We may get a few this week because you got like fucking five people on the four people on the call. Let's go to the Twattermeter. Expect even less from a bunch of neckbeard stinky twats. All right, I'll have you who's get twat points this week. Oh God. Okay, so you know what? Let's 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 start it out with the obvious. The guy that was just on our show, literally. I don't bitching about parking spaces, not reading memos and emails and the whole nine yards. I mean, it's not our fault. You make fun of Corey for not being able to see, but brother, you can't read and you have a doctorate, so I don't know what to tell you about that one. But uh, yeah, get your facts on that one. So for that, I'll give him a lovely little three top points. Welcome to the board. You hang out there with CM Punk. Congratulations. Um. But another one, and I'm doing it because I loved how it was built. I love the backstage after the fact. I loved how he got ran down on SmackDown by Triple H. I, I'm just loving everything right now that has to do with The Rock. But I'm loving it because he's a prick. I'm loving it because he's an asshole. Because he he's and then the thing that kills me the most, and I'm the reason the biggest reason why I'm giving him these points is, and I'm gonna say thank you and fuck you at the same time to Pat McAfee. I love your show. I was a giant fan of the Pat McAfee show way before you even showed up in in WWE. And thank God you did because things have only gotten better for you and the show. But The Rock kills me on that because one minute he's Dwayne Johnson and nice to meet you. And I'm into this. And and then just like that turns into The Rock, ultimate prick. For that, you get five points. Uh, Don't ever go back on the Pat McAfee show again. And if you do, I have to watch it. Yeah, that Pat McAfee appearance was the beginning of his heel turn. So how many points are we giving Dwayne? Dwayne gets five, Amir gets three. All right, that puts Dwayne on 30 points. Second Jesus. only to the sex ring. Oh, God. You boys got anybody? Anybody piss you off this week? No, well, besides Amir. Fuck you, Amir. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think the cat even said so, too. The cat's like, Amir, I heard it. <laughs> Sounds like uh, good. Man, uh, man, I mean Eric Bischoff saying his stuff. Oh God! Uh, what's he said now? I, even I ain't seen this. 
Okay, so I didn't watch the full 18 minutes. I listen to Eric from time to time. I mean, say what you will about Eric. He does have a lot of experience and knowledge, even though, you know, history and what he's gone through. But mostly it was just about Mercedes Monet is not going to be a game changer to AEW because AEW is just cosplaying wrestling. He went on a whole thing about it. I listened a couple of minutes. Oh, That's pretty much a gist. Oh, yeah. He's getting about 10 to water meter points. <laughs> Yep, so Eric Bischoff, I'll go, because that was one of the things I saw this week. I mean, I would have said Ryback, but that's a clear thing, because Ryback is constantly, see, I told you guys that this is how it was like when I was in the WWE, and there's more to come, and they should take Triple H off the board. Yeah, I would say Ryback. That was so, the best just, fucking Ryback impression I've heard. The only oh, thing I was missing was a little bit of munching in the middle of it. Right? See? Me more. Oh, don't you guys know that when I was there, I was not shocked by this. Everybody should just be off the board. Yeah, so just Ryback and Eric Bischoff. All right, let's give five points to each of them. Okay, that's fair. (laughs) So, for any points to throw out? Uh, Amir, I'll I'll give Amir about five points on the meter today. All right. That's generous. That's me being generous because, you know, we let him talk. For way too long, and I'm feeling generous. So he, I give him five. I cut him some slack. All I right. Guess. Oh, can we give an anthem? Just the friggin' Twatameter two for hey. getting it before Scott the more. Can we just give anthem as a whole? Oh yeah, they they got ten points on the board. Oh, yeah. Say, didn't we get him last weekend? We got him last. Yeah. Week. Okay. They got ten points instantly. Little bitches. Fuckers. Uh, all right. Now let's be nice to people. It's time for the yeet o meter. Yeet. <laughs> Do you? Do you feel me? Do you feel him, sir? Do you do? This week's Yeet meter um, well, we've put, we've in total, we've given eight points to the Kingpin, so you know what? I'm going to give eight pence, eight, eight pints. You can have eight pints, too. I'm going to give eight points to Cypher. Oh, eight pints. Come on, now. Thank you. Um, Keep it very UK around here, having hand out the pints. <laughs> it comes in pints. I'm getting one. Uh, for stepping up to Gunther, I'm going to give two points to Jey Uso. Um, I want to give somebody else points too. Um, or Truth. Seth. Cody and Seth. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's give Truth points for um, giving us possibly a new DX t-shirt. A Dick's oh, t-shirt. Oh, Truth. Oh, <laughs> Can we get? Can we put Becky on there just for the fact that I have to explain to my daughter why my daughter, why my dad wants to fight Maui? Can we get that in there? You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> give I'm gonna give her two points and Seth two points because also he referenced Moana too when Cody you're said welcome. thank you for having my back. He said, "Hey, what can I say? Except you're, you're welcome. welcome." Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Rue gets five points for that training video too. Hell yeah! Let's just give all the points to the fucking Rollins household. Oh, what about uh, Andrade? That video package on Andrade was sweet, man. Can we just give mm. it for Andrade? I'm a little bit funny on Andrade because he's like, I left to find my... No, you got fired. That is true. Nice. <laughs> I left to find myself. No, you got fired. Right. You oh, got, we got fired because Vince couldn't understand you. Yeah. Yes. This is give true. me more some points because, you know, TNA royalty right there. Mm-hmm. All, all the points to everybody in TNA except for Anthem. They can go fuck themselves. Hey, all right. All right. That works. <laughs> well, uh, that is it. That is all the points on the board. Thank you for joining us. I hope we rocked you harder than John Cena suplexing himself 16 times at SummerSlam 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go anywhere, here's what Moses and the TSK have for you pants on the geeks this week. And click this. So a whole lot. I, I, I said it last week. We had like the NXT review from Vengeance that has to drop. We had, uh, or we have, I should say, the whole how the whole thing started with The Rock, and now we're gonna have how the whole thing is finishing, thanks to it all being changed, the press conference or whatever. So there's three episodes to drop. Two of them are gonna be old. One of them not so much. So just be aware of that. Audio issues. Let's just say that audio issues cause them to drop late. They have been fixed. Uh, I, I now know how to uncorrupt files. Let's just go with that. So that's good fun stuff. But those three are going to be dropping 
probably this weekend. I know it's going to be a little later than anybody likes, but that's okay. It'll be dropping this weekend, so you got a whole full platform. Since we do have a three-day weekend here in the States for the President's Day, there it is. You got three episodes for the weekend, and then probably some more. I know the boys want to get talking on some other topics, so there's some, there's there could be more dropping. I do know for sure that uh, we're going to be taking full advantage of YouTube Live in the next coming weeks, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, we may do a live revolution review. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know for sure, for sure yet. It's but it's in the talks. But we're going to be taking advantage of YouTube Live. Uh, before you know it. So the only way to make sure you're following all that and being uh, in the loop of all that is following all the beautiful socials, hitting us up on the uh, artist formerly known as the Twitter machine, Max Wrestling UK, Captain 512, SMR Pod Net. Hit the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com, where you can find all these lovely links and a whole bunch more. Hit the subscribe button here, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, fuck you, TikTok, and all the other socials. And of course, we have to close the show by talking to the boys. I know Mike's been doing stuff with uh, with Rob and with DC. Mm-hmm. Corey, I know you're you're prepping for both a, a tag match and a title defense. So, I, yeah. I, I'm going to go with I'm I'm going to I want to go with the champ first. You got anything for us before we let you go? Well, leap of faith. Like I said, I'm doing I'm pulling double duty. One with Amir Bitch Bane Costello and oh, hey. one with uh Das, so you know, tag team titles on the line, world title on the line. I'm feeling pretty confident as we go in leap of faith. I'm definitely feeling confident, but you know, let's just we're just gonna go out there and we're gonna do our best and hope and hopefully no more kingpin. Oh, yeah, fuck you, beer. I love it. Right, beer. All right, Mike, what's the haps? I, again, it, it, you, Nicola, and Rob, you and DC, and then God only knows what else you got going on your normal stuff. Oh, uh, boy. Okay, well, first of all, it is great to be back with you gentlemen, and it's great to be in the presence of the Max Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion Cyber over here doing his Tupac, all eyes on him. Um, hey. you, could check me, you can check me out on Twitter at SMShow1 or MCL92, stevenmikeshow.com. More Steve and Mike episodes are going to be coming very, very soon with my boy. Uh, Dan Stop and I... Steve. <laughs> So, Uncaged is coming as well. Uh, season 3, Episode 5 will be airing soon as Dan and I touched upon the some of the greatest wrestling managers, including the Paul Heymans, the Paul Bearers, the classy Freddie Blassies, the Captain Lou Albanos. Uh, and then we'll yeah. be doing our next episode where we'll be touching upon classic championship belts, including the Winged Eagle, the Intercontinental Championship belts. And yes, Dan is going to go on a rant probably about that Jeff Hardy Enigma Divas Championship looking belt from TNA. Uh championship itself so that's gonna be fun uh Uh robert robert nicola and myself just dropped deep into the heart of wrestling where we looked at the 14 year anniversary of the wwe tna monday night war from 2010 with hulk hogan and eric bischoff coming in getting ready to six sides yeah that was actually a good episode of impact though they really they they tried they did they really did and i mean we covered that whole shebang there and i mean for me Man, I got my On the Mic with Mike's more episodes to come on that. And just please stay tuned to the Mike Larkin YouTube channel, Mike Larkin 92. And I'm here and there and everywhere, man. And Instagram is Larkin underscore 92 and uh, M Larkin MB, the LFC podcast, LFCfights.com, which is also on the YouTube channel. So if you just type in Michael Larkin on YouTube, you'll see me there. And uh, you'll see me with my Max Wrestling previous works on this channel. So I'm here, man. I'm on the grind. The grind never stops is really all I can say. And just stay tuned to be on the lookout. Yeah, you'll see that 600-something day reign as knowledge champion. And with that said, join us next week for TNA No Surrender Predictions. And like I said last week after talking to that dweeb Ben Resnick, a mandatory Dragon Club meeting. We got some stuff to talk about. Probably not going to be as intense as what we just saw with the contract signing, but still. We got a meeting next week. You've been watching The Cap, and Mo, and Mike, and Cypher, and The Kingpin. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. I'm going to cut Phoenix like a doctor cuts an umbilical cord. Uh, I like my parking space. Fuck you, Amir. Hey. <laughs>